Did you know that one Russian man's decision in 1983 potentially saved us from World War III and nuclear apocalypse, and no one even knew about what he'd done until years later? But how close did we come to total annihilation? Who was this brave man? Did the Soviet Union ever punish his actions? Let's have a look. Meet Stanislav Petrov, a man you've never heard of, but one who arguably helped more people than anyone else in history. This is how he saved us. The Cold War was a tense time, to say the least. For over four decades, the world held its breath as two nuclear powers, the United States of America and the Soviet Union, sat waiting for the other one to fire first, so a response could instantly be launched. In this state of hostility, both sides poured endless resources in developing technology that could detect incoming missiles. By today's standards, the detection tools of the time looked like child's play. But the technology was developing fast and trusted to keep each country safe from the other's perceived hostility. The two sides had never declared war on one another, but were constantly at each other's necks in the form of proxy wars. The 70s saw the U.S. commit genocide in Vietnam, while the USSR poured money in to help fight them off. The 1979 Soviet invasion of Afghanistan saw the USA respond similarly, providing huge amounts of weaponry to locals that were deemed anti-Soviet enough, particularly the Mujahideen. With all of this indirect warfare between the superpowers, how did the two never come closer to unleashing all hell on another? The truth is they almost did, and no one knew about it for years, with many people still not even knowing to this day. What it could have done to the world is beyond belief, but the man who stopped it always remained humble. But first, let's have a look at how he did it. In 1983, Petrov was having another normal day at work overseeing defense systems that scanned for incoming missiles. His normal was very different to what you'd probably recognize, though. He had a huge responsibility as the international tension seemed to grow every day. The USSR was in the middle of another proxy war with the USA in Afghanistan, so he knew things could escalate to more direct conflict at some point. But the global leaders of capitalism and communism had never pulled the nuclear trigger on the other yet. America had spent much of the year conducting psychological operations. This included flying U.S. bombers to the edge of USSR airspace before they pulled out at the last minute and returned. This was meant to test the Soviets' radar capability and make them worry, which it undoubtedly did. On the 1st of September that year, the Soviets shot down Korean Airlines Flight 007, which had flown into its heavily protected airspace. In doing so, they killed U.S. Congressman Larry McDonald and made the Americans arguably more livid with the Soviets than they'd ever been before. It was in this context that Lt. Col. Petrov's missile alarm system started going off on the 26th of September 1983. He was sitting in the Sirkupa 15 bunker close to Moscow, the Soviet Union's command center for early warning satellites. It was where the most important decision in the world's history was to be made. Protocol, which was expected to be closely followed at all times, dictated that if inbound missiles were detected, then an immediate nuclear counterattack must be launched against the United States. While this may sound like madness, the Mutual Assured Destruction Doctrine was followed also by the U.S. and is credited by many as the reason both sides had resisted firing at each other for so long. Knowing this doctrine well, Petrov didn't take it lightly when around midnight the bunker's computers gave warning that an intercontinental ballistic missile, ICMB, had been launched by the U.S. towards the Soviet Union, with four more following closely behind. Both sides were aware that the other had weapons more powerful than had ever been used in war before, and were deploying bombs in secret that could flatten cities. Yet Petrov didn't instantly panic. In his training, the Soviet leaders had taught him that any situation like this had to be immediately reported, but Petrov feared his bosses could be less restrained than him. It already struck Petrov that it was odd for the U.S. to send just five missiles. The expectation was that if war were to ever start, the instigator would fire many missiles at once to overwhelm the opposition's defense system and undermine the ability to retaliate. Petrov knew this military aspect and also knew the computer systems well enough to suspect their reliability at times. By the way, there is one other nuclear incident at the end you might think was even wackier, but we'll get to that. Petrov's job wasn't to make this decision himself, though. 
but he knew if he reported the alarm like he was meant to, then the Soviet Union could start firing missiles at the U.S. with just a moment's notice. He couldn't trust them to keep a cool head, and so instead, he waited and waited. These old systems couldn't suddenly realize their own mistake, so all he could do was hold on and hope he was right that the U.S. would never fire a lone missile. When 20 minutes later he still hadn't heard an explosion and the bunker wasn't tremoring, he started to realize he was right. If you'd prevent a nuclear war but had disobeyed your bosses, how would you feel? Proud? Scared? Relieved? Probably a mixture and things were certainly confusing for Petrov after that. When his superiors found out, he got into trouble for not recording the incident in the official military diary properly. Imagine that. Break the rules, save the world, and your bosses decide to call you out on bad admin. Years went by without the world finding out how close it came to destruction. Soviet leaders didn't want people to know that their technology could be faulty, and Petrov was moved to another post in the military before an early retirement. If former Soviet air defense commander Yuri Votenstev, who Petrov first reported the incident to, hadn't told the story in his memoirs, no one would have ever found out. Petrov died in 2017, age 77. But how do you think he talked about his story in his later years? A film was made about him, books were written, and the effective altruism movement named September 26th as Petrov Day. He had a lot to be proud of, right? In fact, he always remained very humble about his choice when he risked the wrath of the Soviet military leaders. For 10 years, he didn't even tell his wife of his bravery. When she asked what had happened, he responded, Nothing. I did nothing. The poor brave soul never recovered from the incident, suffering a nervous breakdown after he lost his previous post and saying that he felt like a scapegoat. So we all have a lot to thank this man for. The son of a nurse in the poor far eastern city of Vladivostok, who would have thought someone who'd grown up to monitor computers would end up doing so much for the world? But while this makes us wonder how we can rely on technology so much to keep us safe, that probably wasn't even the wackiest way which we avoided World War III during the tense Cold War years, even if it was the bravest. In 1960, the USA put a new $1.2 billion radar system into operation called BMOOS, designed to detect Soviet missile launches as soon as possible. With military staff gathered around in excitement, the hubbub quickly gave way to fear as the machine was turned on and immediately said 1,000 missiles were on their way. Everyone calmed down once they realized there was no chance the computer was right. The Soviet Union was only estimated to have four suitable missiles at the time. When the issue was investigated, they realized that what this state-of-the-art machine had seen as the biggest threat in history was the moon. Let's hope our more modern technology can distinguish incoming balls of fire from the sun. And hopefully in the meantime, we can keep relying on brave people like Petrov to make the right decision when we can't rely on technology and we remember his name for many years to come. Do you reckon you could have held your nerve in his position? Let us know in the comments and hit subscribe to see more great videos like this.